tech news is neither here nor there. It's in its own dimension, filled with magic smoke and giant heads like the ones from Easter Island, except they're all Tim Cook and they answer every question with, ha 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 ha, no. No! Microsoft has backported AMD's branch prediction improvements for Zen 3, 4, and 5 CPUs to Windows 11 version 23H2, meaning that Ryzen users can download this new optional update rather than sitting by the window, sighing and waiting for version 24H2 to become available. 24H2 is currently in release preview and reviewers report substantial performance improvements in several games. According to testing by hardware where Lux, some of the games, like Starfield, are seeing gains of 13 to 41% depending on processor model, and others like Cyberpunk 2077 saw gains anywhere from 4 to 61%. There were also some odd outliers, like Control, which saw general improvements, but an odd 10% regression with the 7800X3D. Hardware Unboxed likewise found a 2 to 4% improvement for Halo Infinite, but a 30 plus percent improvement for Gears 5. If this optional update is at all similar to the performance granted by the 24H2 preview build, it should bring real world performance closer to the benchmarks that AMD had to retract last week after reviewers were unable to replicate them. Source? I made it up. Meanwhile, MSI motherboards are incorporating AMD's update for Ryzen 5 9600X and Ryzen 7 9700X CPUs with a toggle in the BIOS that increases TDP from 65 to 105 watts, which promises to be around 13% faster. It's not downloading more RAM, but it's close enough. Both iFixit and Jerry Rig Everything performed teardowns of Google's upcoming Pixel 9 Pro XL to test the company's claims of a two-fold increase in durability. You can hit it with two hammers now and it, it will still break. While the phone was indeed more durable over the past Pixel generation, it was also significantly more complicated to repair with plenty of hidden screws and fiddly brackets, the worst kind of bracket. It's like you're trying to get to second base with a robot who is also Jigsaw's daughter. Would you like to play a game with my robot daughter? What? iFixit's inspection hit a rocky start when their application of gentle heat and pressure to remove the device's screen caused a significant delamination, rendering half the display unusable. Though luckily for this generation, Google has implemented a dual entry design that allows the user to open the device from the back in order to replace the battery, meaning users will be able to avoid removing the comparatively fragile screen. While the Pro XL's double XL battery comes with a pair of deceptively handy looking pull tabs, they were apparently just for show. Both iFixit and Jerry Rig Everything wound up resorting to isopropyl alcohol to dissolve the powerful glue and finally using a spudger to crowbar the battery out. It's just a prank. You know things get real when the spudger gets involved. Jerry Rig Everything further pointed out that all of the tiny screws were different sizes, adding unneeded complexity and creating a devious trap for absent-minded repair technicians with hay fever. Don't sneeze or it's all over. <laughs> Gotcha, <laughs> you got punked. An audit performed by the US Department of Justice's Office of the Inspector General has found serious flaws in how the FBI stores, tracks, and disposes of electronic storage media containing sensitive and classified information like national security documents and my sixth grade diary. You know they have it. We're in Canada, but they're very thorough. According to the OIG's report, the FBI doesn't do enough to track internal hard drives and thumb drives, increasing the risk of loss or theft. The organization also failed to consistently label these drives with the appropriate classification levels, which could lead to employees getting a little too casual with top secret documents. Likewise, facilities holding electronic media to be destroyed and disposed of were found to be insufficiently secured to the point of being monitored by non Non-functional security cameras. That's why the mon they weren't, they're not being monitored. It's uh, about the threat. The FBI has acknowledged the findings and outlined a few potential solutions, such as putting the drives in cages and using security cameras that work. They could also try using our sponsor, Charge. Their Shargeek 170 power bank is jam-packed with 24,000 milliamp hours of electricity juice, which is scientifically proven to make your devices work real good. 
With a max output of 170 watts, a max input of 140 watts, support for USB power delivery 3.1, and two-way charging, it charges your devices and itself at the same time real fast. The Shark Geek 170 has two USB-C ports, one USB-A port, and a built-in, informative display to monitor your charging progress. And its iconic transparent design makes it look like the MacGuffin in a sci-fi story where you're the special kid who has to recharge the sun. I think this thing could do it. Check it out and give your devices a boost at the link in the description. Woo! The quick bits also live in the tech news dimension. You know, they fly around in there, which is why you do want to keep your head down. They will sting you. And they poop everywhere. <laughs> SpaceX has delayed the launch of the Polaris Dawn mission, which is being funded and crewed by billionaire Jason Isaacman. Isaacman is perhaps the fourth billionaire to take an unreasonable interest in space. If it happens one more time, I can fill out my punch card and get a free sub. I can just take all my money up there and then it'll just be me and my money. It'll be perfect. The Polaris Dawn mission will be the farthest crewed space flight in 50 years. What's well, a few more days? In more unfortunate SpaceX news, one of their Falcon 9 rockets tipped over and fell into the ocean today. Oh, 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 no, oh, no, 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 no. In the rocket's defense, it had completed 23 successful flights. It deserved a beach day. We're out here supporting the, the Falcon rockets. You guys work hard. I want to see the Falcon 9 rockets unionized. <laughs> <laughs> Signs of upcoming AMD hardware has been spotted online. BenchLeaks tweeted some Geekbench results for a system with a device ID of GFX1201, which was previously associated with Navi48, a GPU that will power at least one Radeon RX 8000 series graphics card. Hopefully, the RX 8600, because these results place it between the 7700 XT and 7800 XT. But you're a handheld gamer now. You don't care about desktop GPUs. You want me to move on to this 96 core Zen 5 based Ryzen Threadripper CPU spotted in a shipping manifest. Looks cool. I don't know when it's coming. And also, I don't know why you would care more about that. You can't install that in your handheld either. You're a quirky one. We're gonna figure you out though. Gannett, the largest newspaper publisher in the US, has decided to shut down its USA Today product review website, Reviewed, blaming changes to Google's algorithm affecting search traffic. So far, so normal, sadly, but it's notable that the site's own unionized staff accused Gannett of using it to publish AI-written articles just last October. Suspicions were raised not just by the article's strange, stilted writing, but also by the fact that several articles were structured near identically to one another. Further, the authors cited in the bylines seemed to have no other traceable web presence, making them either AI fabrications or privacy-conscious ghosts with a passion for consumer journalism. I know which one I prefer. <laughs> They just left us too soon. They had unfinished business. <laughs> for some spooky reporting. Researchers from Google and Tel Aviv University have revealed Game Engine. Oh, I get it. An AI model that can act as a game engine. This was demonstrated by its ability to interactively generate 1993's Doom in real time using techniques similar to stable diffusion. Game Engine can apparently run quotes Doom at over 20 FPS using a single tensor processing unit, and human testers were only able to distinguish genuine clips lasting a few seconds from these generated clips around 60% of the time. Now, does this mean that we are essentially forcing a computer to hallucinate demons? Yes, you truly can run Doom on everything. And the world's first online accessible bioprocessor is now available to almost anyone. Final Spark's Neural Platform is a service that allows remote access to 16 human brain organoids, basically little meatballs made from brain cells. Since we last reported on this in May, Final Spark has now opened up paid 24 seven access to their weird wetware. For academic customers, it costs $500 per month, while industrial users can get a quote for access to a sin against nature. I'm joking here. Brain organoids like this have been used in robotics research and are also helping search for a cure for Parkinson's disease. It's a welcome redemption arc for meatballs, which are mostly known for causing heart disease. 
It's $600 a month if you want it with oregano. Just don't ask them if they're alive. And we're known to give you more tech news, if you come back on Friday, that is. It's like training your very own human brain bioprocessor, except it's free. And also it's your brain. 